This is Kennedy Classics with Dr. D. James Kennedy. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jerry Newcomb. And I'm Jennifer Cassidy. This week, we celebrate our nation's birthday. It used to be a given that America was a Christian nation. But if you say that today, you may end up with a fight on your hands. President Obama even said once, whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. What do we mean when we use the phrase Christian nation? Does it even matter? On today's program, we'll investigate that important question, and you'll discover how Christianity is actually being silenced in America as the religious freedoms guaranteed by our Constitution take a back seat to the sexual revolution. We'll also share a valuable new resource with you that will help you have security during our nation's difficult economic times. And as we begin today's program, let's hear from my father, the late Dr. D. James Kennedy, as he sets the record straight in his classic message on the issue, America, a Christian nation. Now may we hear the word of God as it's found in the 33rd Psalm, verse one. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, Sing unto him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. And may God bless to us this day, this his holy word. Amen. Our scripture text today said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the Bible asks, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? There is no doubt that this is indeed a nation which was built upon the foundation of God, that the Lord indeed was the God of this nation, that it was founded upon the principles of God's word upon the teachings of Christianity and for the advancement of the kingdom of Christ. All of that is under enormous attack and has been for the last few decades. In fact, so effective has been that attack that the historical revisionists have all but removed every vestige of our Christian heritage from our textbooks in school. Even the very monuments in the nation's capital are being changed and removed that point to the Christian origins of this country. You and I were born in a Christian nation that may not be said for your children or grandchildren unless we who have received this marvelous patrimony do something other than let it sift through our fingers like sand because we are engaged simply in personal peace and prosperity, as Dr. Francis Schaeffer used to say. 
My subject is America, a Christian nation. If we know our history, we know that this was a nation founded upon Christ and his word. Those foundations indeed are crumbling in our time. John Quincy Adams, President of the United States, said that the highest glory of the American Revolution was what? It secured our independence from England. It got rid of the stamp tax, tea tax. What was the highest glory of the American Revolution? It dissolved our bonds with Parliament and the King? No. Listen well, said President John Quincy Adams, the highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. One indissoluble bond, government and Christianity. Well. They have come with their solvents of unbelief, skepticism, atheism, Marxism, humanism, secularism, and they are doing everything in their power to totally dissolve that indissoluble bond. And we need to give ourselves to that task that that bond not be dissolved or else the principles of Christianity will be replaced by the secular principles of humanism and atheism, and life will lose its significance and its meaning. Life will become cheap, as it certainly presently is in this country, as humanistic principles are prevailing in more and more spheres of our nation. That's why Charles Hodge, who was the greatest theologian America ever produced, who was the glory and jewel and crown of Princeton, said, quote, the proposition that the United States of America is a Christian and Protestant nation is not so much the assertion of a principle as the statement of a fact. But today, people seem to think that in some way religion in general and Christianity in particular are in some way inimical to good government and that the purpose of the government is to keep religion away from the governors of our land. A very different view than held by George Washington who said, quote, true religion offers to government its surest support. In fact, Washington said that without God and the Bible, it would be impossible to govern. Robert Winth Winthrop said that it may do for other countries and other governments to talk about the state supporting religion, but here, under our free institutions, it is religion which must support the state. Samuel Adams, the great firebrand of the revolution, as he was called, said this, let divines and philosophers, statesmen and patriots unite their endeavors to motivate the age by impressing the minds of men with the importance of educating their little boys and girls, of inculcating in their minds, in the minds of youth, the fear and love of deity. That's what the founders of this country believed that we should inculcate in the minds of youth the fear and love of deity. Because in our stupidity and unbelief, we have banned God from the classrooms, we have taken away prayer and the Bible and the Ten Commandments, we have replaced them with police dogs in the halls, policemen at the doors, metal detectors in our high schools, crime in schools, which is absolute epidemic, and teachers 
who are early retired from battle fatigue. This is the folly of modern America. Yes, my friends, you and I were born in a Christian nation. I'm afraid our children or grandchildren will be born in an atheistic one. Just at a time when the atheistic states of communism around the world are crumbling and people are clamoring for the word of God, so much so that they jammed up completely the book fair in Moscow a few months ago when 50,000 Bibles were given away. They stopped all traffic in every direction, trying desperately to get their hands on one. Just at a time when the rest of the world is realizing the folly of unbelief and the fatal results in the lives of people, America continues apace down the foolish pathway toward godlessness and secularism. I pray that God may grant that we may have the courage and the conviction, the strength of character, the boldness to be able and be willing to stand up for Christ. And we are engaged indeed in a great struggle, testing whether this nation or any nation that believes that men were created by a divine creator and thus endowed with inalienable rights, whether such a nation can long endure. There were in the beginning and there are today those who believe that this which we have received as our patrimony, a nation of freedom and liberty and only where the Spirit of God is, is their liberty. Those that have been willing to fight and to die for such a country. And if a nation is built on such exalted principles as these, if it was created for such noble purposes as the advancement for the kingdom of the kingdom of Jesus Christ and the glory of God, then indeed such, such a nation deserves our sacrifice and our support. May we pray. God forbid that we who were born into the blessings of a Christian America should let that patrimony sift through our fingers as sand and leave to our children the bleached bones of a secularist and godless society. O oh God, grant us strength by thy spirit that we may do all in our power in our time that the kingdom of Jesus Christ might be advanced here among the greater number of pagans and heathen that now infest this land, and that God may be glorified, and once more it may become a city set upon a hill. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Our nation was established by godly men and women, most of whom practiced the principles of Christianity. If you would like to learn some of those principles and grow in your understanding of the Christian faith, we'd like to send you Beginning Again, written by my father, Dr. Kennedy. Just write to us or call our toll-free number and ask for Beginning Again, or go to our website at truthinaction.org. God bless you. There's no question that our founding fathers deeply valued religious freedom. George Washington proclaimed national days of thanksgiving and said that it is our duty to obey Almighty God. He said in a letter dated May 10th, 1789, that he never would have signed the Constitution if he had ever thought it meant that Christians would lose their rights. What is happening today would shock him and all other founding fathers. 
Our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb and John Rabe bring us this Truth in Action update. In a Broward County, Florida school, the Bible is banned from free reading time until a Christian legal group gets involved. Thank you, Lord. In Greece, New York, the town council was hauled into federal court because it dared to open its meetings with a prayer in Jesus' name. A Hemp Hill, Texas woman posted a copy of the Ten Commandments on her private property, but authorities have sent out an order to remove the sign. This week, we celebrate the anniversary of our nation's freedom on the 4th of July. But as we speak today, in a nation founded on religious liberty, the freedom of Christians is being constricted in our time. John, you would think these are isolated cases, but they seem to be happening all over the place. Yes, they're very much not isolated cases. Uh, these are just the most recent crop, even just from the last few months. The courts are being filled with the sorts of cases that say you cannot bring Jesus' name onto public property or into any public setting. The most egregious one, perhaps, is the case right here where we're at in Broward County, Florida, uh, just in April of 2014, where this young boy, Gio Rubio, a fifth grader, was told by his teacher that in free reading time, where the students can read whatever they want, that he could not read his Bible. This is such a twisting of what was intended by the First Amendment that we're no longer even the same, in the same universe that the Founding Fathers inhabited. Yeah, everything's being twisted in our time. And in fact, we're in production on a major two-part special to air in a few weeks on the Constitution and the threats to our liberty. We the people under attack. The Bible story is one of those stories for that special. Here's the dad in that case. I was shocked. I just couldn't understand why they wouldn't allow my son to read his Bible, especially during free reading time in, in school. The Bible is not contraband. It's not something that we need to keep out of our, our classrooms because it's going to cause a danger to individuals. And students have a right to have the, their Bible on campus with them. And certainly during free reading periods, they ought to be permitted to be able to read that or any other book of their choosing. Certainly the First Amendment, which the founders gave us so that there would be no national denomination, that is being twisted in our time. It absolutely is. The whole concept of the First Amendment is to protect the American people from being compelled by the government into a certain religious observance. It was never intended to restrict the free exercise of religion, and in fact is there to guarantee the free exercise of religion of individuals, and that includes individuals who are part of the government. A government official participating in religion or making religious statements is not the establishment of a religion, but so many courts today hold now, just even hearing it out of the mouth of a government official constitutes establishment and so we have to ban it everywhere. It's a complete unearthing and upturning of the First Amendment. James Madison played a pivotal role when it comes to the Constitution and he said this, there is not a shadow of right in the general government, that means the federal government, to intermeddle with religion. The subject is free and unshackled. Government has no jurisprudence over it. Well, obviously, John, a lot of things have changed from then to now. They certainly have, and particularly in the last 70 or so years. Since the 1940s, we've seen the courts put a stranglehold on religion in public life and really institute this regime of secularism. What is secularism? Secular it comes from the Latin word saculum, which means the here and now, this very moment. It's opposed to that which is eternal. Mm -hmm. For the first 150 or so years of this nation's existence, we had a Christian worldview focused on things that were lasting and eternal. That's now been replaced with things that are just momentary, just transitory, just living in the here and now, and we're paying the price for it. Boy, that's so true. And you know, when you think about it, really, I think this boils down to autonomy. People mm -hmm. don't want to hear from God. They don't want to believe in God because they don't want to hear and have his rules for right and wrong. I think that's exactly right, Jerry. What we really see over the past 45 years or so is that the secularism is really being driven by sexual anarchy. People do not want to have constraints placed on their sexual behavior. And the rights to unrestricted sex have now come to replace all the rights that we were supposed to have that were even guaranteed to us in the Constitution. That's what's driven the abortion movement, which was imposed on us by the courts in Roe v. Wade. That's now what's driving the homosexual agenda, and it is the homosexual agenda in the courts that's now causing the secularism that says to Christians, you cannot speak out, you cannot refuse to provide services for or homosexual weddings and so forth. All of your religious rights are trumped by this sexual right that is really part of sexual anarchy. 
Who founded the country and for what purposes? I mean, the country was founded for religious liberty. But listen to what the Supreme Court said, six to three in 1992 in the Casey decision. At the heart of liberty is the right to define one's concept of existence, of the universe, and of the mystery of human life. Scalia says that's the passage or the sentence that ate the rule of law. That's right, and that sentence was cited by Anthony Kennedy in his ruling for Lawrence versus Texas, which uh, essentially developed a right, a constitutional right, to homosexual sodomy. Mm -hmm. What has happened is that this right to define our own existence, which is purely made up by some Supreme Court justices, is now trumping what's actually in the Constitution. And in the meantime, you have people whose rights are really being clamped down on. Anthony Kennedy uh, fortunately ruled rightly and with the majority in the recent case of Greece, New York, Praying where he name. exactly where he allowed the prayer in Jesus' name. But unfortunately, an issue like that that should be cut and dried as a constitutional constitutional right. We now have to see which side of the bed Anthony Kennedy, the swing vote on the Supreme Court, gets up on to determine whether or not we still have our constitutional rights. I know, it's almost like each summer we have to wait for our robed masters to come down from Mount Olympus and tell us what our rights are or what they're not. That's right. Our rights no longer rest in the Constitution, they rest in the hands of the judiciary. So here we are in a nation founded for religious liberty and yet we're losing our religious liberty. Here's attorney Matt Barber of Liberty Council Action. What we're talking about are transcendent biblical principles. If we speak truth on these principles, we're going to get major pushback. We're going to be hated by the world. But this is what we're commanded to do. We're seeing Christians step up to the plate and do this. Right now, more than ever in American history, the free exercise of religion is under attack. So John, I think what we're looking at here is a zero-sum game. It basically, you have homosexual rights and you have Christian rights, and the, the homosexual rights are trumping the, the religious rights every time. Yeah, and ironically, the religious rights are the ones that are actually enshrined in the Constitution. And what we're seeing is that while people aren't going to jail over it, there is a price to be paid in American society, and it's, it's growing greater every day. Just recently, there was the case of the two men who were going to host a program, Brothers, on HGTV, and they were fired by the network because they held a pro-marriage, pro-family view. The CEO of Mozilla, Firefox, uh, had to step down from his position because he had contributed money to a pro-marriage cause. Standing on the side of marriage is now going to put us in the crosshairs of the current culture that prizes sexual liberty above every other sort of liberty, including the ones that are actually enshrined in our Constitution. Well, recently, Dr. Robert George of Princeton spoke at a prayer breakfast. Listen to what he said. My friends, the days of acceptable Christianity are over. The question each of us today must face is this. Am I ashamed of the gospel? And that question opens to others. Am I prepared to pay the price that will be demanded if I refuse to be ashamed? If, in other words, I am prepared to give public witness to the massively politically incorrect truths of the gospel. So really what is needed in our time is more courage as Christians. That's exactly right. And we have to know our rights and be willing to go to bat to defend them, not just for ourselves, but for others. And I think our Constitution special coming up in a few weeks will help people with that. John, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jerry. And may the Lord find us faithful at such a time as this. Shocking, isn't it? In a nation founded for religious freedom, religious freedom is at risk. This ministry has been informing people for decades now on our nation's Christian roots and on a biblical view of government, science, education, music and the arts, and more. My dad, the late Dr. D. James Kennedy, was committed to helping Christians think and act in a Christian way applying the Word of God to all of life. As our fiscal year end draws to a close this week, I want to ask you to support us with your prayers and donations. Where else on television do you see this kind of powerful information? Our voice is needed now more than ever. Won't you please consider making a generous donation to help us finish the fiscal year on a strong note? Our deadline is fast approaching 
and we must hear from you before midnight on June 30th. We understand these are trying economic times in America, and that's why we need your support more than ever. As our way of saying thank you for your generous donation of any amount, we have an outstanding new resource we want to send you. It's a new five DVD set of my father's messages called God and Money. We'll send you the five DVD set and we'll also include the excellent book, Freedom from Financial Fear. When you contact us with your generous donation of any amount to the ongoing work of this ministry, simply write to us at box 6053, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll free 877-942-7677, or go online to truthinaction.org. This five DVD set has never been offered before this month, and it's exclusively available through this ministry. You simply can't get it anywhere else, but we need to hear from you before our fiscal year ends at midnight on June 30th. So please don't delay. The five DVD series, God and Money, as well as the book, Freedom from Financial Fear, are yours when you contact us with your generous donation of any amount for a limited time only. Some of you can give $50. Some of you can give 60 or even $100 or more. Every dollar helps us continue this important work. So please write to us at Box 6053, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll free 877-942-7677, or go online to truthinaction.org. Some generous friends of our ministry have established the $100,000 Stand Strong Challenge Fund to help us end the fiscal year in black. But the deadline is fast approaching and we need to hear from you before midnight on June 30th in order to meet their challenge. We're honored to be receiving words from around the country on our 40th anniversary celebration. Thank you for joining us and may God bless you as you stand with us. And may God bless America with repentance and a new birth of freedom. A video of today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. So please call, write, or log on to our website today. Next week on Kennedy Classics. As we celebrate the birth of this great land, we know that this land has been principally made great because it is the great bastion of freedom and liberty. Through the whole ordeal, many of the signers paid a high price, and all of them were willing to pay a high price, so that these United States could be one nation under God. That's next week. This has been a production of Truth in Action Ministries.